I'm gonna give this way from group one. I am the leader of group one. Today, we'll be presenting on various topics. Today, we all understand how important it is to learn the English language. Children are taught the language from a young age so that they can get a hold of the language easily. Vowels and consonants in the English are a big part of the language, as well as one vowel and more than two vowels. In the case of articulation in our country, vowels, kids must be explained and taught these things. In this presentation, we have covered the information about the given topics that you can teach your child. I will pause here. Yeah. Good evening to all. I am Jessica Inja Morris, and today I will be presenting on the topic syllabication. I will also be telling you the kinds and types of syllabication. First, day, what is syllabication? Syllabication is the process of breaking words down into parts or syllables based on the number of vowel sounds in that word. For example, we have words like They say we should count the vowels in the word. Which I told you, one, two, three. Or sometimes they can have more than three vowels. You count it, subtract any silent vowel like E. You subtract the, the vowel that is just there and not making any sound, you remove it. And then you subtract one vowel from every different. For example, in the word country, C O U N T R Y. So you find out that O U here is a diphthong. So they are telling you to subtract one of the vowels from this diphthong. So you can move this. Country. So you find out that this O and this U is not making two separate sounds. So it's a one syllable here. C O U N. So the O U making just one sound. So they say you should subtract one the vowel from the, 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 the diphthong. And then they said the number of, of vowel sounds that is there is the number of syllables. So after you have taken away the silent vowels, after you have removed one vowel from the table, the remaining vowels that are left that are making sound are the number of syllables that you have. So we move over to types of syllabication. There are six major types of syllabication. We have monosyllabic. Monosyllabic is a type of is a type of syllabication that talk about one syllable word. For example, I gave you the game is a one syllable word. So it falls in monosyllabic. And then we have bisyllabic. So bisyllabic can also be called dasyllabic. So you either see ba or da. So in our case, we have two syllables. For example, country that I gave you here. This is one syllable and this is another syllable. So this can fall in ba or da syllabic. And then we have trisyllabic, as the name suggests. We all know that the previous tri means three. So trisyllabic has to do with three syllable words. For example, revolting. So you have one syllable, you have 
Another name for the silent E is magic E. So for silent E like this one I gave you gay. So in this case, you have an E in the word, but that E is not saying anything. It's not making any sound. For example, G-A-M-E, game. Who know the A is making a sound? The E is there in the spelling, but the E is not there in the, the sound of the word. So E becomes a silent E or a magic E as you may want to call it, game. Then we have another kind of syllable that we call vowel arrow, or you can also call it arrow control vowel. For vowel arrow or arrow control vowel, you will have a vowel that will be followed by an arrow. And that arrow will control the vowel or tell the vowel how to sound. For example,
making a long sound bold and it's a single syllable so all of these words just one syllable word but you have two vowels in it as i said from the beginning you are not looking 100 percent at the number of vowels in a word or else you will get confused because if you are looking at the number of vowels and they tell you to divide this word break into syllable you can't divide it here because we have how many syllables or how many vowels here two right so some of them are divided here because we have two vowels but no you are not focusing on the number of vowels in here but the number of sound that that vowel is making so you see bread is just making one vowel sound e so this this e a falls on the vowel team syllable a is making one sound thank you so much if you have question concerning this presentation you just ask and i will be able to help make some clarity
the RPA. So for this symbol, the sound is shh. And for that we have shot. And this symbol is giving us the sound. And for that we have vision and measure. And this is giving us the shh. And for that we have check. And this is giving us the J sound. J. And for that we have J and batch. We go to the viola. The viola has to do with the contact and the soft palate. So for the viola, yes, it's simple for it. And for that, the sound. This symbol gives it M sound, M and G sound. So for that we have uncle and boy for that symbol. Then we go to the glutter. The glutter has to do with the restriction of the airflow at the glutter. So for the, 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 the glutter, which is the last, we have H. The sound for H is So for H, we got Ha, Ha, and Bahamas for that. So that's the H. That's the H. Our control vowels are vowels that can be followed by R. So, any vowel becomes an R control vowel when it is directly followed by the letter R. The resulting letter combination causes the vowel to make a different sound than typically expected. So, we also refer to the R control vowel as the bossy R. Whenever the R comes before the vowel or if the vowel comes after the R, it changes the sound, the sound of the vowel. Because that vowel has its own sound, it is making a short sound. But then when you add the R there, it changes the sound. So we have five R controls vowel. We have the AR, we have the AR, we have the we have the full power and the new power. We have the fast power control power. Before I can pronounce this power control power, if I can turn out there, let me just turn out the vowels itself. A is saying A, E is saying E, R is saying E, O is saying O, and U is saying O. But when you add this R there, the sound of A, it changes to R. E is R, I is R, O is R, and U is R. So we have E R, R R, and U R. These three are giving one sound. They give the same sound. We have R, R, and R. And E R is giving one sound. U R is giving one sound. So we have three sounds. Within the R control vowels. Yeah. There are five, but we have only three sounds. For example, we have F A F A T. I just say it this way. F A T is saying fat. But when you say F A R, now you are getting a short sound in this word F A T. Fat. Ah. But if you add the R there, you are hearing far. It changes the sound of the word. Far. So it is controlling this vowel. It is bossy this vowel. We call it the, the bossy R. And then we have ER. We have, and let's say MET MET. MET MET. The ER is giving a short sound. It's saying E. 
and net. But when you add an ara there, you see, um, this area the sound of the word changes. We have we hear the, the ara sound. It's mer, mer, mer. So now this area is controlling this E, which is the vowel. And we have R R. Let's just say in the word chip. This R is saying A. You are hearing the sound chip. A. But if you add an R there, you say C H R R P. The sound of the word changes. It's saying chur. Because the R is saying er. So it, it turns to chur. 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 So this sound changes. And then it gives you a new sound and the meaning of a new word. So you come to you come to the OR. Then there's the F O E. Then it's saying four. 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 F O E four. So now we are not hearing the sound in this word, or we are hearing the name of the, the, the vowel. Oh. But if you say F O R, the sound of this vowel it changes. It's saying R, R, F O R, four. It comes to U R. So if you say F U R, it changes to four. Four. So now this O R. Again. Okay. But then they are not the same. Because the A R and the O R, they are giving an individual sound. The E R R R and U R they are saying it's just an R R. So let's just this, this, this word is pronounced R R. So don't get confused. It's saying four. And then you say four, no, four. So this is it, guys. Our control vowels are vowels that can control the vowel itself. They are followed by they are followed the, the vowels are followed by her, and then it changes the sound of the word. Once it is followed by the vowel is followed by her, so we call it then the bossy R. Good afternoon, class. We use a dangerous, dangerous thing we well. have. Uh, I'm the leader of two of UB and we'll be presenting on um, the following topic which consists of brains, gift, and manner of articulation. Wow. And so, I start. Stella Marie Polytechnic University, Bishop John Collins, Teacher College, St. Joseph Campus, Capitol Hill, Bolivia, Liberia. Course code. TPSO 201, course title Teaching Phonics in Elementary Schools. Topics to be discussed blends, diphthongs, manner of dedicated to all our young teachers. Acknowledgement This work is here today because of the hard work cooperation of my group members. If, uh, if I never had the backing of my group members, we wouldn't be here today to present the work to you. So thank you guys. Table of content, introduction, blends, deep tones, diagraph, and manner of articulation. Introduction. Teaching phonics, teaching phonics to children is good effort to aid, is a good effort to aid children in their daily conversation and quest to higher education. It aids them to be fluent speaking and allow them to get okay with screen's voice. Here are some topics that will aid you on your course to teach them phonics. Consonant blends. So, as you teach children phonics, you should teach them consonant blends. And consonant blends, where two or more consonant sounds appear in, in a word with no intervening vowel, vowels. Consonant blends is where two or more consonant sounds appear in a word with no intervening vowels. Then you got deep stones. This one is a gliding vowel where sound begins as one vowel sound and moves to another vowel sound. We got diagraphs. 
that graph is a two-level combination that represents a single sum or a single phoneme. Manner of articulation is where the air stream is affected as it flows through the lungs and out of the nose and mouth. Deaf tones are gliding vowels in the sense that they are not static. They move from one sound to another. There are two adjacent vowel sounds. Now don't get me confused. There are not two adjacent vowels but two adjacent vowel sounds. There are two adjacent vowels, but you are not focusing on the vowel being adjacent or the sound being adjacent. Now, for example, we have couch and tin. In this word, there is a diphthong word and this is a vowel tin word or a long vowel word. Now, you are seeing in here, you are seeing two adjacent vowels, and here you are also seeing two adjacent vowels. But for this word, you will hear the two vowel sounds. Couch. You are hearing the A and you are hearing the U vowel sounds. Couch. But for team, you are hearing team, not. You are not hearing the two vowel sounds. So there is a long vowel word and this is a diphthong word. They are adjacent, but the sounds here, you are hearing the two vowel sounds. And here, you are hearing only the first vowel. This is obeying a two vowel rules that says when two vowels go working, the first door is talking and the second keeps silent. Now, like I said earlier, there are two adjacent vowels that are being placed together to form a single sound. Now, like for the form, and the long vowel or the vowel that obey the two vowels. There are, sim there are similarity and there are differences. They are all vowels. But in some cases, like for in the long vowel sound case, you will see that in some cases they can be separated. Like in a, the silent key, you are seeing that they are separated. But with the tone, they can never be separated. They can come at the beginning of a word, like in the word out. You are seeing them at the beginning of the word. They are not separated. You are hearing the two vowel sounds. So this is a deaf tone. Out. And they can also come at the middle of a word. Like I said, they can never be separated. Couch. And they can also come at the end of a word. They are not separated. Enjoy. Now, we are going to be looking at the eight common diphthongs that we often use. Some both might say ten, some both might say nine, but for this research, we are going to be discussing the eight common diphthongs and how they sound in word. Now, the first sound here. We have ear. Ear as in the word here, near. We also have air. Air as in the word bear. We also have a. A as in the word pray. Also, break. We have I. I as in the word light. We also have R as in the word crown. We have R. All as in the word boy and all. We also have air as in the word 
Sean and Juan. And then last we have or as in the war, pure. These are the eight common devtons that can often be used in English. Now to conclude, devtons are gliding vowels. They are not static. They move from one vowel sound to another. And there are two adjacent vowel sounds. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is William Hills, member of the one. In the next few minutes, I will be presenting you on the topic one vowel and two vowels. One vowel says that when there is one vowel in a single syllable word, that vowel usually has eight. It usually says it only. And on the board, we have a lot of examples, a lot of words on the board. For example, we have and. In the word and, we have ant. And the A is saying the short sound. But I'm going to say it with the words and. So this A is sounding as a, a, a vowel, a short vowel sound. The word is well. And. It is not A or and. In the word but, we have B, it is but. The A is sounding like ah. It's not A. It's not B or A. It's, it's ah. And in the word cut, we have C A T cut. The ear is short. It's pronouncing the vowel there. You see what? Short. You see ah. And it's not A. And we also have another word here. We have cut. C O T. In the word cut, we have O here. The O is saying it short sound. It's not saying O. It's saying oh, O oh, O. Oh. So the OS the word is, is saying it short sound. We also have the word the word egg. The word is egg. We're not saying we are we're not going to say e. The word is egg. So we hear the, the, the vowel sound in our word egg. It's not e or egg. So the e here is saying say it short sound. We go quickly to uh, Good afternoon, I am Joshua Numba and I will be presenting on the topic, the manners of articulation. Uh, we want to give special thanks and appreciation to our lecturer, Mr. Tumiri Faya, for allowing us to showcase and test our phonics skills. Uh, there is a disclaimer that we are not experts. We are students and we are teachers in training. So please bear with us. If there is any error, if you have questions, you can comment on this video and we will reply. Thank you very much. We now proceed into our presentation. Uh, what is the manual of articulation? Whenever you hear the manual of articulation, it has to do with the air flow that comes out of our mouths, our nose, and also from the throat. Most of the time that most people or most uh, phonic scholars or language scholars, uh, some classify the manners of articulation in four groups. Some classify into seven, some also classify into six, and so on. But for the sake of our lesson, we will classify them into the following. One, we have the plosive. The plosive have to do with, uh, we call it the stop. This is the, the amount of articulation that have to do with the constriction of the air or the blocking of the air in our mouth when it is released and it is abruptly pulled out and we pronounce something like P like pop, 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 B, b, b and N like M, M, M. So if we were classifying them, it's like we classify them into uh, like the place of articulation, it would be like the balavia 
and letter like T and D will be classified into the alveolar and K and G will be into the villa stop. But this is now a concentration. We now move on to the fracative. Fracative have to do with the hasty sound. It have to do with the hasty sound. This is the amount of articulation that allow air to pass, you know, partially. This air is not being full leg as, uh, as, as being here in the closet where you find out that you hold the air and release a bubbly, but it's like so you find like F, letters like F, like V, it's like so these are uh, uh, fracative. And then we move on to letters like uh, H. H is also a fracative, but it is, it is also something we call the glottal fracative. Like if we're using the full details of the place and manner, then we'll be placing it on the glottal, the glot the glottal fracative. But for now, we are focusing on the manners. So now we move to the African. The African have to do with the combination of two. That is the plosive, the brief uh, plosive, that is uh, 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 a little bit of the plosive in a full of what we call the, 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 the fracative. So the combination of both the plosive and the, the, the fracative gave us what we call the African. Like we looking at the letter J, or we looking at we are pronouncing the badge, you know, or we are pronouncing a word such such as um, like jam. So these are what we call African. Now we move on to the nasals. Nasals have to do. We already hear the sound nasal. We are all familiar with nasal. And whenever you hear nasal nasal, you have to do with something that that, that is that is in the nasal cavity. And the nasal cavity, the um, the the, the outward organ is the nose. So we know that the the nose. Uh, 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 is part of the nasal cavity. So whenever you are pronouncing words that are or letters or sound from the nasal cavity, a a is a manner of articulation where the air is pushed through the nose. So in in it there are three nasal sounds. We have the the mm, mm, and mm, like you are saying like in learning, you know, like mm, mm. So they are all part of the uh, 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 the nasal. Then we say that we have another manner of articulation that is called the liquid. The liquid is the manner of articulation where the tongue is curved. And whenever the tongue is curved, it allows air to flow from the side. It flows from the side. Like it flows from, we call it like, I hate to say you are driving, it's a low shoulder. So it flows from the lower shoulder, uh, or the lower part of the, of, the, of the mouth. So whenever the tongue is curved, it flow in so the 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 liquid, the liquid have to do with a manner of articulation where the air escape from the side like if you are calling letters like letter l, 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 l so these are liquids then we have the gland or the approximate which we refer to as the semi vowels that, that these are the manner of articulation that have to do with the tongues that move like if it, it goes it, it go back and forth like you are saying like Whoa, 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 and yup, yup. So these are gliding vowels, or we refer to them in the manner of articulation. You will see in some books, some writers will say uh, the glad, or some will say approximate. So let's do the review of the manner of articulation. We start from the bottom. We say we have the glad, which have to do with the moving of the tongue back and forth. And we have the liquid, we have to do the curling of the tongue. We have the nasa that have to do with the sound coming from the, the nasa cavity. We have the affricate, which involves the combination of both the fracative and the plosive. Then we move on to the 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 the, the fracative that have to do with the hazing sound that have to do with like S, Z. All these are fracative letters. Then we have to go to the last one, is the plosive that is doing what we call the stop sound. So a combine both something called the balabia, the two lips coming together and you know quickly releasing the air uh, like b b b and m the lips coming together. So t d k g uh, m n you know they are all part of the 
close it and we say they are nasal stop. So again, we say they are TD nasal sound and we know them has a mm, mm, and mm, that is the ing sound. Thank you very much. Again, I'm Joshua Numba. If there is any question, please comment, share this video, like the video, and subscribe. God bless you.